So a quadratic surface is just the graph of any second degree equation in x, y, and z. A second degree equation in x, y, and z just means it has any sort of combination of the variables x, y, and z, and they can only be at most to the second power. So here are a few examples of a quadratic surface equation. So these are basically a family of graphs that live in three-dimensional space. And so we're going to come up with tools to help visualize what these graphs are going to look like. So one tool to visualize these graphs is to take cross sections of the graph. And so when you take a cross section, you basically take one slice of the graph and see what the graph looks like just on that slice. So it's the intersection of the entire graph and one specific plane. Because we are better at visualizing what two-dimensional graphs are going to look like. So if we hold one variable constant and look at the slice just at that value of the variable, then it reduces to a two-dimensional equation, which we can visualize easier than an, an equation with three variables. As an example, say we have this sphere in three-dimensional space. When we say to take a cross-section, we have to pick a value of one of the variables to set as a constant. Here, let's take the cross-section of the sphere with the plane y equals 0. And the plane y equals 0 is just the plane along the x-axis. So the cross-section of the sphere along this plane y equals 0 is what the graph looks like on that slice of the sphere. And so as you can imagine, the cross-section is just going to be a circle. And it's going to be in the zx plane because we're holding y constant. So at y equals 0, the zx plane looks like this. And the cross-section of the graph is a circle. And so the general idea is that we take many cross-sections. You know, For example, we could take another cross-section holding x constant, and then another cross-section holding z constant. And once we have all of those cross-sections, then we get an idea of what the whole quadratic surface is going to look like. As an easy example, let's take this equation, z equals x squared. And so notice how y isn't even in the equation. So let's just try to find some cross-section holding the value of y constant. So let's say, let's take the cross-section at y equals 0. So the xz plane at y equals 0 is going to look like this. It's just a parabola in z and x. And so since y isn't in the equation, if we took the cross-section at any constant y value, it would look exactly the same. So in other words, th this collection of points on this parabola, their x and z coordinates are always going to fulfill the equation. Because no matter what their y coordinate is, it has no effect on whether they fit the equation or not. So to get the entire graph, all we have to do is take this parabola in the xz plane and slide it along the y-axis. So the actual quadratic surface looks like this. You can see how they just took the parabola at y equals 0 and slid it along the y-axis. Okay, so a next example is z equals 4x squared plus y squared. So first let's find the cross sections perpendicular to the z-axis. So if we fix z at a constant value, we know they are horizontal planes perpendicular to the z-axis. So we want to find what the graph looks like at the intersection with those planes. So we just try different constant values of z. When z equals 2, the cross-section looks like an ellipse. If you keep taking cross-sections at larger values of z, all you're going to get is bigger ellipses. So we can see that all of the cross-sections of this graph 
perpendicular to the z-axis are going to be an ellipse. So just from these, you can already get sort of a picture of what the graph is going to look like. It's going to be branching outwards as z increases. So now let's take the cross sections perpendicular to the x and y axes. So if we hold x constant at 1, then we get a parabola in the yz plane. And same for if we hold y constant. For any constant values of x and y, we, we just get a parabola in the yz plane and the xz plane. So the quadratic surface put together looks like this. You can see how perpendicular to the z-axis there are a bunch of ellipses that are getting bigger and bigger as you get higher in the z-axis. And then in the other directions, there are parabolas. So you can see how the cross sections fit onto the entire graph. Our last example is going to be the hardest one to visualize. So first let's take the some cross sections perpendicular to the z-axis. So notice that if we take z equals 1 and z equals negative 1, these cross sections are different shapes. They are both hyperbolas, but because the x and y is switched orders, the, the hyperbolas are pointing in different directions. So for positive values of z, the cross sections are going to look like this. And then for negative values of z, the hyperbolas are on the top and bottom. So the cross sections perpendicular to the z axis change depending on whether the z value is positive or negative. And then next you can take the cross sections holding x and y constant at constant y value, then we get upside down parabolas in the xz plane. And at constant x value, we get right side up parabolas in the yz plane. So you probably have no idea what this quadratic surface looks like. So here are some a better pictures of the cross sections. And then this, this should give you somewhat of an idea. And then here is a quadratic surface put together. So again, you can see at constant y values, you know, perpendicular to the y axis, the slices are looking like upside down parabolas beneath the graph. And then perpendicular to the x axis, you have some right side up parabolas you know, riding on top of the graph. If you were looking down on the graph, then it would look like some hyperbolas above the graph. But when the z values are negative, then the hyperbolas are pointing in the opposite direction. 